We focus so much on numbers um, in the financial industry, but the numbers are just the strategies, and those strategies are always going to be driven by a story. If you can just get to the story, the stories that we tell ourselves, that's where the power is. We're talking with Sarah Newcomb, and we're talking about the psychology of investing, in particular, the psychology behind financial decision making. Sarah, how would you describe the psychology behind financial decision making? Well, I think the psychology of financial decision making is an enormous topic, first of all. Um, there's, a, there's a huge landscape of decisions that we make with regard to our money. At the same time, you can say that every single financial decision is made in the larger context of our lives, our identity, our, our sense of self, our goals and our dreams, our families. So to think that psychology doesn't affect our financial decisions is I think just wrong headed. Um, but then when, when you want to start to learn about financial psychology, where do you begin? And I think in, in my experience of studying a broad spectrum of co cognitive psychology, consumer psychology, marketing research, economics, all of this, I think that what I've learned is that what it really comes down to, if you have to distill it down, is that behind every single financial decision, there is a story that we're telling ourselves. It's very rarely about the numbers. The numbers for one person will uh, bring up a story that would be very different than that same number would bring up for someone else. And so it's really, it's not about the numbers, it's about the stories we tell ourselves because of those numbers, and those stories are rooted in our personal psychology. Knowing that, what's the opportunity for financial advisors to perhaps um, take advantage of this psychology and, and better serve their clients? Well, I think a lot of financial advisors are looking for ways to deepen their conversations with their clients. And this can give a language and a, an understanding of the broad landscape and some of the, the themes in financial psychology. If you understand some of the basic themes and know what to listen for, you can start to listen for the stories that are underlying your financial or your client's financial decisions. And then once you can identify what some of those stories are, you can help them. You can talk to them on the level of their stories, help them maybe rewrite some of the stories that could be leading them down the wrong paths. For advisors who are interested in, in pursuing the quest for more knowledge about this and how they can help themselves and their clients, what's the best way for them to get started? I think a lot of these topics are obviously covered in my book. Um, at the same time, there's there are some great other resources um, about financial psychology. I think the Journal of Financial Therapy is a great place to start. But overall, I think the really valuable thing is just to learn the fundamentals of financial psychology. Just get a little bit well versed in um, in what's happening, in what makes us tick, and how we make our financial decisions, and that'll go a long way.